Hello. How are you? All right. I am excited. Um, so we have been really diving into just getting very pr productive with our time, right? So I want to extend it a little bit further and give you some tips that have helped me so much. And this was something I learned probably four years ago, if not five now. It's the it's called the Eisenhower matrix. And when I learned it, I didn't know it was actually a thing. Okay, so the more I dove into it and realized how stinking amazing it was to help me get more productive, because let's be honest, right, we all have the same amount of hours in the day, we all have big goals. And at the end of the day, we have more to do than we have time. And so I, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I was always the, I can just get it done better. Um, if I do it, then it's just done once. Um, I never ask anyone for help. That is a big, big fault of mine. And I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But if you're anything like me, we put so much on our plate and we're so hard on ourselves when we can't accomplish it all. And on the other side of things, we just get things done to get them done. And they're really not as good as they should be. We put, um, you know, just kind of half-ass effort into things just to get our to-do list done because we're not willing to ask for help and we are not schedule, we are not prioritizing it correctly. Um, and so I want to share this with you because at the end of the day, you all have goals. And in order to reach those goals, we must prioritize the actions necessary to reach those goals. So you have goals, we've talked about this multiple times. Um, you have goals in different aspects of your life, right? You have goals in your health, you have goals in your finances, you have goals in your relationships, you have goals in your um, in your business, you have, you have all kinds of goals. And yes, when I say that, you're just like, it's a lot. But it's real, right? You may not have them all written down, but at the end of the day, when you think about every aspect of your life, you do have some wants, right? And wants are goals. But most people don't set goals for all the things because it's overwhelming and they just are like, I can't do all of the things. On top of working, on top of being a mom, on top of taking care of the house and making sure it's clean on top of right laundry, all the things, right? I'm just like sitting here thinking of all the things I need to get done. And I'm like, whoa, but I, here's the thing. Learning this method I'm going to teach you will help you to calm and do in the order that moves the needle. We're always talking about moving the needle. We want to move that needle forward, not backwards. Okay, we want to move it forward. So we talked about in the last um, training, if you missed it, go back and watch it. But in the last training of, you know, what generates you the most income when it comes to your business, you want to know those things. What generates you the most income? What actions generate you the most income? For me, it's conversations, right? And second up is social media and in-person events, okay? So I'm kind of creating this hybrid now um, because we are back in person. We are loving getting together with people. Um, we've missed it so much. So conversations and in-person and online presence. Those are the two biggest things that generate me income, okay? Where do you generate the most leads? Ask yourself, where do you generate the most leads? Are you generating the most leads on social media? Are you on Facebook? Is it in your stories? Like what part? Like really focus in and know what's generating you the most leads. Leads lead to conversations, which lead to sales, right? Um, and just prioritizing your marketing. Where do you need to spend more time, right? So like I don't get anything off of TikTok. So that is the least on my priority list. I am the least consistent there because it has not generated moving that needle forward for me yet, okay? And then Instagram and then Facebook and LinkedIn, wherever you are. But here's the deal. We try to put so much on our plate because everybody's doing it and everybody says I need to be over there. Where do you need to be? 
Where do you need to be? Okay. Here's another thing before I get into the Eisenhower matrix that really is going to help. I think it helps me. So I know it's going to help all of you, but is know what your product and service does. What does your opportunity do? Like know it. When somebody asks me what the inner circle will do for them, I know what it's going to do for them. It's going to move their needle forward. It's going to help prioritize their, their income producing actions. It's going to help them build confidence. It's going to help them become more accountable to themselves. It's going to help get rid of all the shit that doesn't work for them and only focus in on what does work. And, and it's going to help them to stop listening to all the noise and put their blinders on and go after their goals. Right? So when somebody asks me, I know exactly what my service is going to do. I know exactly what my coaching does. Know what your product and service does. Like, know it. If you have a billion products, what are the ones you love and focus in on those? You don't have to know every single one of them. But become a, like, true, what I say, a true expert, because you are a product of your product. You are a product of your service and opportunity. Become that of the things you love. Okay? So when you're having conversations, your conversations are more prioritized with the information. You don't have to go seek it. You don't have to go ask. You don't have to, like go around the bush. I had a message this morning and, um, it was, you know, just about how do I, how do I talk to this person about pricing? I don't want to scare them away. Well, at the end of the day, the product's worth it, right? So you give them all their options of what it's going to cost them and let them choose their best route. An informed person makes a decision. A confused person makes no decisions, right? So we just have to lead into that confidence. And a lot of times you have to seek those answers out, save them and start learning them and be part of your conversation, right? Know where your most growth happens. Where does the most growth happen for you? So for me, I know it's in person, like for my growth game, it's, it's truly in conferences and um, settings like that where you immerse yourself. That's where I know I get the most growth. So I'm going to spend more time finding those things and being part of those things than listening to a book. I still listen to books, but I don't get as much from them, right? So you can see that priority is different, okay? So I'm still filling my mind with great stuff. I get more from short form YouTube videos on certain topics of personal development than I do um, listening to a book. I still listen to books, but I can tell you I don't get as much from them as I do from other things. So now I know where my growth game is, right? Where I'm going to spend more money and more time. Okay, so here's the other thing is when I'm doing Audible, when I'm listening to a book, I cannot sit at my desk and listen and hear. I don't, I, I do not hear anything. I'm, I'm hearing words, but I'm not hearing. I'm not ingesting it. I'm not absorbing it. But when I go on a walk for 40 minutes, those 40 minutes, I'm truly hearing it. So where's my best time spent is listening to my books when I'm on the treadmill or when I'm outside walking because I'm listening, I'm truly absorbing it. So instead of putting my earbuds in while I'm in my desk, I know I'm only going to do it then, right? So you're prioritizing and understanding where you get the best out of that action. When is the best time you get um, conversations done? Is it in the morning, afternoon, evening? I know for me in the evening, heck no. I got too much going on, too much distraction, too much distraction. So here's what I do. And I do this full time. I'm just giving you guys some examples. So you can look at your day and you look at your lifestyle and go, when is the best time for me to do this? Um, so for me in the morning, my best, best thing, I get up 45 minutes before the boys. Okay. 45 minutes before the boys literally go downstairs and I get 30 minutes of walking on the treadmill. Here's why I do this. There are days that I just don't get down to the gym again. 
And what I've learned is if I don't at least walk 30 minutes, my brain just doesn't function as well. My body is like wanting it. Now, it took time to figure that out. I didn't want to get up 45. I hate getting up. Hate getting up. I do not like mornings. Never have. I don't care what I take. It ain't, it ain't my thing. But I know that's the best for my mind. That's the best for my body. It's just to get up and walk. I am not awake enough or motivated enough to do a workout. But I am awake enough to, to walk on the treadmill in an incline and listen to some books that I have, right? So, if you're not getting your workouts in, figure out. Maybe you're just expect your expectations of a workout are so big, right? So I used to be a personal trainer. So I could be like, oh my God, all you did was 30 minutes of cardio on a walking on a treadmill. I could be judging myself, but no, I'm doing the best I can and still moving the needle forward. That is, that is the expectation that I have. And I want you to have those same expectations is you're moving the needle forward. So if you're not doing a thing but in your mind, the only thing that you can do to get results for working out for your body, for your health goals, is to go to the gym. But that isn't happening. Let's, 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 let's think about that for a second. The goal is to get healthy and move my body. But I am 100% blocking what I know I need to do. So why don't we do something that's a little bit easier and fits into your day with ease? And then work towards getting to the gym, right? Know what's going on in your life and know what you need and what's holding you back. And sometimes you got to give yourself some grace and know that you don't need all in. You just need in. You got to take that one step. You're moving that needle forward. I don't care how fast. I just don't want the needle to be like this or here. I want it to be like, do, do. I want it to be going forward. I want it to be bouncing forward. It may not bounce far forward yet, but if we ain't moving forward, we're only moving backwards, okay? So let me share with you, um, like I said, I, I've been doing these lives on my phone because the, in, the, the, the computer is not reliable. I'll do these and then it doesn't save them. So, I'm on my phone, so I'm going to turn this around, and I want you to take a look at this. This is called the Eisenhower Matrix, and I want you just to take a screenshot, okay? Okay, so take a screenshot of that. This is the Eisenhower Matrix. This is urgent versus important. So, you can see it's four boxes. On the left-hand side, bottom says not important. The top says important. The top left is urgent, and the top right is not urgent. Okay, so when you're looking at this, urgent and important, these things are like, you must do it. Like, it's got to be done. Like, finishing a client project, um, submitting a draft for an article, responding to emails, picking up your sick kid from school, right? These things, sorry, I, I just realized my phone has the light on it, but I'll move it so it's not messing up any of the words. Um, so picking up your kid, fr your sick kid from school, those are you must do. These are clear deadlines, consequences for not taking immediate action, okay? Now, important but not urgent, these are the things we need to schedule, these are the things we don't got to get done right away. These are the things that if we do them, the needle will move forward. But it is not life or death, right? These are activities without a set deadline that bring you closer to your goals. Easy to procrastinate on, okay? So some examples of this that this uh, matrix gives is strategic planning, right? That's just like in our world, it would be like content creation, content planning. It would be planning out... Um, different events you're going to go to or host, um, personal development, right? We know it's going to move the needle, but in when we look at this list of urgent and important and there's no more room, 
we know that professional development can happen tomorrow. Networking can happen tomorrow. Exercise can happen tomorrow, but we need to schedule it. We know it's important and we know we want to do it every single day. But if the to-do list is too large of urgent and important, and that's where you got to know on your list, is everything I have urgent and important or is it just important but not urgent? And then at the bottom right, we have not important and urgent, that means we can delegate that, right? We can delegate that stuff. So things that need to be done, but don't require your specific skills. This is busy work. This is stuff that anyone else could do just as good and probably better because they'll actually be focused on it, right? Um, so the things that I delegate is like some of the housework. Um, number one, is the dishes, the dishwasher, um, the trash. Um, the kids do their own laundry and I help, but it is their responsibility. Um, scheduling, uploading blog posts, or here's the thing that I like to do. So I delegate, this is kind of a, a fun way. I delegate my post schedules. Guess what? Facebook does it. I go in, I create them, but they're all scheduled out for my fan page, right? Because I know my audience. I know what I want to put out there. I know who I'm talking to. And the only thing I need to do on my fan page is to show up and go live. Everything else can be scheduled, which would be not important, but it is urgent, right? So I do want to get it all done. So I schedule things. Meal prepping. Responding to some emails, right? So how can you look at everything in your life and go, what's not important but urgent? Who can I have help me with this? Or is there a way to take this off my plate, just do it one time a month and have the whole month done, right? So that's how I look at that one. And then the final box is not important, not urgent. This means delete it. Delete it. It doesn't need to, it, it's not even important. These are distractions that make you feel worse afterwards. Can only be by you can only hold on can be okay but only in moderation so these are things that literally take your goal and go no nope, not today we're gonna actually move that needle backwards so scrolling on social media now i don't I, examples here are social media if you're using social media for your business that's one thing but if you're actually using social media as a like ingesting it then you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. Watching TV, That, in my opinion, um, watching TV is like garbage, except for I do think that if you are someone like myself, that your brain doesn't shut off, I always watch a show every night and it just kind of takes me into a world that's not mine and my brain can calm down and I can go to sleep so much better. Um, video games, I've never been into video games, but that makes sense. And then eating junk food, delete it. It makes you feel like crap. So why would you want to function on a crappy energy level? So we delete those things, we get rid of those things. So as you're looking at your entire day, every action you do or don't do, I want you to look at that and go, is it in my to-do? box? Is it in my schedule it box? Is it in my delegate it box? Is it in my delete box? And here's the thing. When you do put this into place, when you do put this matrix urgent versus important into your daily, every single day priority, prioritizing your things, your time and all of that, you will find you have so much more time for yourself and your family. Because I get it. When you're working and then you're trying to provide additional income and you got, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. I, I just don't have the time to put into this. You do, but your, your expectations that you've put on yourself are so high. I want you to bring them down to where, where you are and move it forward a notch. Take one more step up that stairs. Because every step you take gets you to your goal, your highest expectation, but you gotta realize you're here and we wanna go here. Ultimately, we wanna go here, but there's not a single person that have, has created success in their life, no matter what 
bucket of success they're in, right? Relationships, family, um, business, finances, you name it, right? They've had to take it one step at a time. Fitness, one step at a time. I, I used to have clients come in, they're like, ah, my, my goal is to lose 50 pounds. And I'm like, all right, we're going to start with one. We're going to start with one pound. We know your ultimate goal is 50 pounds of weight loss. But if we focus on 50 and you only get three this week, you're going to feel like you're a failure. When in reality, you just lost three pounds. That is super successful. That is amazing. Because there's a lot of things we got to change in your lifestyle that are not easy. To make those three pounds happen, that leads to six pounds, leads to nine, and ultimately to 50. Okay? So we always want to know our biggest goal, but I think too many people focus on that biggest goal. And when you focus on the biggest goal, we try to do all the things instead of going, nope, this is what I must do, urgent and important. This is what I need to schedule. This is what I need to delegate. And this is what I need to delete. So as you're looking at all your buckets and all your goals, I want you to go, okay, these are the actions I need to take. What are the ones I must do? You're going to be so blown away that your must do list went from like this to this. And you're going to be like, that's all I got to do. I got this. Your confidence is immediately going to lift, right? And you're going to be, you're going to be okay with scheduling some stuff out. You're going to be okay with delegating some things. You're going to be okay with deleting things. Like I had to delete Netflix because I was like, I'm like an all in or all out kind of person. I'm all in usually, or I'm all out. So Netflix, these series, I have control of it now, but man, because of my personality, I was like all in. So if I started a series and it had 17 episodes, I was like, well, I can't stop. I'm on number nine. I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm further than halfway there. I would keep going. I would keep going. And I'm like, I just wasted all my time. So I had to delete it out of my life until I had restraint and personal restraint to go. Nope. I have committed to only having one show a night to shut the brain down so I can go to sleep with ease instead of thinking about all the things I need to do. Okay. So know what's helping you reach your goals and know what's hurting you. Know what doesn't take your skills that could be literally done by a child or your husband or um, somebody else, right? If it doesn't need your personal skills, it can be delegated. A lot of housework can be delegated. I do not have a house cleaner. Um, I did when the boys were super little and I am so like, I would highly suggest that always when your kids are little and you just cannot freaking keep up. But now that they're older, they're part of the cleaning crew. It is their job, their responsibility. I've delegated that to them and they're eight and 10. They've been doing it for four years. Okay. So it's never too young. They can do things, right? I think about when Jax was three years old, what did I have him do? I had him always picking up his room, always cleaning his sink, right? All the things that would take me so much time that I could be doing something else for my business or cooking a healthy meal for the family when they could be doing those things. So I think about those things and I used to be the, I can just do it better. And you have to get over that. You have to know, Getting it done, whether it's somebody else doing it, just know it's not going to be as good as what you would do it. But that's okay. It's done. And it's teaching them how to do things. My kids have done their own laundry for four years. Yes, their own laundry. They have their own laundry room up by their bedrooms. It is their job to do their laundry. If they run out of pants, oops, maybe you should do some laundry. They run out of underwear and they say something to me. I'm like, well, you know. What do you need to do? Oh, I need to do my laundry. They don't love it, but it's creating responsibility and it's delegating it and taking it off my plate. Okay, so I don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to think about it. Okay, the only thing I do for them is their their bedding. I do their bedding once a week and that's it. That's my, that's what I do for my kids when it comes to laundry. So what are some things that you need to shift around on your calendar? Um, and remember here, if you didn't get a screenshot of it, definitely get a screenshot. These 
are the squares. Important and urgent, important, not urgent, not important, urgent, not important, not urgent. And that's how you can start to structure your days and your actions, the activities that you must do, the activities that you need to delegate, schedule, and delete. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, I am gearing up. So April 7th, just to give you guys ugh, my hair, I just had it cut and done and she thinned it out and it's just doing some crazy ass shit. But like, I'm like, what is going on with this? Like, I straighten it and it goes, it's all because she um, thinned it out and it's taken its own natural curl curve. But so April 7th is a Friday. I will be having shoulder surgery. Um, but my plan is I can, I can hit go live. I can, I can talk. I can do all those things. So there will be no hiccup in your training. Um, I am going to pre-record some smaller ones to schedule in there because my goal is is to pour more into you. So you, in the last few weeks, you've seen me come live a couple times each week. Um, that is what I intend to continue to do, even through the recovery of my shoulder surgery. So um, I, I, um, it's been a while since I've been in the, the OR. So I used to go into the OR as an athletic trainer and help and um, all the things. And so last night I was like, this is like side note, but last night I was watching some of the like videos of the surgery I'm going to have done here. So I was like, <sighs> like in my head yesterday when I was talking to my husband, I'm like, I'll be fine. I'll be driving in about four or five days. Um, like, this isn't going to be anything. And then I started watching those videos just to give my, you know, I like to be prepared. I, I am one that, like, likes to know what's, like, I, I got to see it. I got to know. As so I'm watching this and I was like, yeah, I ain't going to be, I ain't going to drive it in four days. I'm probably not even going to get off the chair in four days. Um, I have, not only do I have bicepital tendonitis, I have a labral tear and I have a subscapularis tear, which is, um, un it's very uncommon to get that tear. So I can't like, I can't do anything behind me, all the things, but I was sitting there, I was like, reality, I need to delegate a hell of a lot more than I am right now preparing for surgery. So like, like, this morning I woke up and my delegating list became all the things that I do on a daily basis to keep this house rolling. That's kids getting to practices. That's all these things, right? So a lot's going to fall on my husband, but also asking my friends for help to take the kids to certain things that their kids are also going to, right? So like anytime something happens in your life, you, you take this Eisenhower matrix, these four boxes, and you go and go, what can I do? What can I schedule? So all of my posts will be scheduled for all the, for all the businesses I have. Um, what can I delegate? A shit ton. Um, and what am I deleting? I'm definitely deleting a lot of things that are important and they're not urgent. Well, I cannot do them, right? So whatever it is, any situation, I've learned to use this strategy to get through it with a ton of priority and a ton of success. So I, I urge you and challenge you to put this into place for all aspects of your life and you're going to have such an easier route, path towards what you want to achieve. So have an incredible, absolutely incredible weekend, you guys. Um, like I said, there's not going to be a hitch in any of this. If there is, I'll definitely post in here and just say, hey, guys, it's going to be a day late or something like that. Um, I'm hoping that surgery goes extremely well. And yes, I'll be in more pain after it than I am right now, but only for a short period of time. And then um, things will be great. So Super excited for it, nervous, but I'm going to be prepared, and that's what I want from you guys. So have an incredible weekend, and I will talk to you all here soon.